Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cover the basics of data, we'll talk about what data really means, explore different types of variables, learn how data can be structured, and understand how we categorize data. This will lay a solid foundation for everything we'll be doing in data analysis later on. Let's start with a simple question. What is data? Data are raw numbers, facts, figures, or symbols. They come from things we observe, measure, or record through experiments, but on their own, they don't tell us much. They need interpretation to have meaning. As analysts, we rely on data to explore problems and make decisions. That's why data is the foundation of analysis and decision making. You actually use data all the time. For example, let's say you're thinking about buying an Apple Watch. You might read reviews on Amazon to see if it's worth it. Those reviews, that's data. Now let's introduce three other important terms, information, context, and knowledge. Data are just raw facts. When we organize those facts in a way that makes sense to us in a specific situation, they become information. Context is the setting or background that helps us better understand the data, like the situation where it was collected. So, in short, information is data plus context. And finally, knowledge comes from combining data and context with experience and intuition. Before we analyze anything, we need to understand what kind of data we're dealing with. One major distinction is between structured and unstructured data. Structured data fits neatly into rows and columns, like a spreadsheet or database. It includes things like numbers, dates, or labels that follow a consistent format. This kind of data is usually easier to search, filter, and analyze. Unstructured data, on the other hand, doesn't fit into rows and columns. It might be text-heavy, or even include images, audio, or video. Think about social media posts, YouTube videos, or blog articles. These are examples of unstructured data. Now let's look at two big types of structured data, categorical and numerical. Categorical data is used to group or classify things. It might use words or even numbers, but the numbers themselves don't mean anything mathematically. For instance, labeling people as adult or non-adult, or classifying inventory methods like FIFO or LIFO. Numerical data represents actual quantities. These are real numbers you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide, like transaction amounts, age, or test scores. Now, within numerical data, we can go even deeper and break it down into discrete and continuous types. Discrete data can only take specific countable values, like whole numbers. For example, the number of students in a class or the number of cars in a garage. Continuous data can take any value within a range, including fractions or decimals. Think about height, weight, temperature, or time. These are measured, not counted. Here's a quick way to remember the difference. Discrete data is counted. Continuous data is measured. Let's now talk about how numerical data can be measured using interval and ratio scales. Interval data has equal spacing between values, like temperature in Fahrenheit. The difference between 30 and 31 degrees is the same as the difference between 77 and 78, but there's no meaningful zero Zero degrees doesn't mean no temperature. Ratio data, on the other hand, does have a meaningful zero. That's what makes it the most powerful type. It allows us to calculate things like twice as much or half as much. Examples include money, expenses, income, salary, anything where zero really means none. Now let's switch over to categorical data, which can be either nominal or ordinal. Nominal data is the simplest type. We can group items, but we can't rank them. Examples include country of origin or transaction type. There's no order, just categories. Ordinal data, on the other hand, does have a sense of order or ranking. A great example is letter grades. A is better than B, and B is better than C but we don't know how much better. 
just that there's a rank. Quick tip. If categories can be ranked, it's ordinal. If not, it's nominal. Now, from a computing or coding perspective, data is often grouped into Boolean, string, and numeric types. Boolean values are simple, true, false, or one zero values. It has two possible values. String values are just text, like names, words, or even numbers stored as text. For example, Alice Smith or A123 is a string. Numeric values are numbers used for calculation. These can be integers, like 5, 10, or floats, numbers with decimals like 3.14 or 2.5. This kind of classification is really common in programming, databases, and spreadsheet tools. In analytics, we work with a few key structures, rows, columns, tables, and lists. A table is like a spreadsheet made up of rows and columns. Columns are fields or attributes like age, date, or product name. Rows are records. Each one is an observation like a single customer or a single transaction. A list is a bit different. It's a sequence of items stored together. Each item can be anything, a number, a string, or even another list or table. Think of it like a box holding different types of objects. Lists are powerful tools, especially in coding and data analysis. Let me show you an example. Here's a table that tracks sales transactions. It has columns for things like transaction ID, date, and transaction type. Each row represents a single transaction. And here's an example of a list named my list. It includes a few different types of data. The number 10, an integer, the word apple, a string, the number 3.14, a float, and the boolean value true. That's the beauty of a list. It can hold different types of values in one container. Now let's talk about metadata, which simply means data about data. Metadata gives us extra information to help us understand other data. For example, a photo's metadata might include the date it was taken, the camera type, or the location. For a dataset, metadata might describe what each column means, what units are used, or where the data came from. Even a document file can have metadata, like its file size, author, or last modified date. Metadata helps us understand the context and structure of our data. Now that we've talked about metadata, let's move to big data. Big data refers to extremely large and complex datasets that are hard to manage using traditional tools. Big data is usually described using the four Vs, volume, the huge amount of data we generate variety, different types and formats from text to video velocity, the speed at which data is created and needs to be processed, veracity, how trustworthy or accurate the data is, for example, think about GPS apps on your phone or social media. These generate massive streams of unstructured data every second. That's big data. So how do metadata and big data compare? Metadata describes other data. It's small, clean, and structured. Big data is huge, complex, and often messy. Metadata helps us manage and understand data. Big data is used for deep analysis like machine learning or business forecasting. They serve different purposes, but are both essential in modern analytics. Let's wrap up. Data comes in many forms structured, unstructured, numerical, categorical. Understanding how data is organized, like tables, rows, columns, and lists, makes it easier to analyze. Recognizing the difference between structured data, metadata, and big data helps you manage and analyze information more effectively. Thanks for listening, and stay curious about data.